interest in vintage computer gaming is without doubt growing. And for me, the golden age is the late 90s. It was around this time that the PC started to flex its muscle and pull away from the consoles in terms of game performance, with the rise of high resolution polygon 3D games and in particular, the first person shooter. So, you have decided you want to jump on the bandwagon and build yourself a period correct yet capable gaming computer. Two things though are standing in your way, cost and space. A full period correct gaming setup will set you back a fair bit of money and it will take a fair bit of space. But there is another often overlooked solution and that is the laptop. And in particular, this Dell Inspiron 8100. I picked up this machine locally last year for about £10, but if you keep an eye on eBay, you can generally get one of these or a laptop with similar spec for about 30 Now, that's a fair bit cheaper. But what's so special about this particular Dell? Well, it was the first laptop to feature the Intel Pentium 3M processor, and in my model it's clocked at 1.2 GHz. It also has the Intel 815 EP chipset, supporting 133 MHz system bus, 4x AGP graphics, and a maximum of 512 megabytes of RAM. But then there's the graphics and this is the most important part because this little laptop sports the GeForce 2 Go with a dedicated 32 megabytes of RAM. No, not shared memory, dedicated graphics memory. All that power crammed into this compact package. Now that's a fair space saving. So let's take a closer look at our Dell. The front of the laptop has these two bays. This one's the battery, but this one here that currently has the floppy drive in it can be interchanged for another battery or even a CD-ROM or apparently also a hard drive if you have the right caddy. Turning to this side, we have our 100 megabit ethernet and modem. This is where the hard drive lives in here and unfortunately I'm missing a screw. That's our infrared. Then we have two PCMCIA on our audio. On the back then we have our two cooling fans, power, one PS2 port for mouse or keyboard, VGA output, that's the interface for your Dell dock. We get parallel serial and two USB. On this side then, we get an integrated DVD drive and an S-Video slash composite TV output. The screen is a nice 15 inch LCD with a maximum resolution of 1600 by 1200. And then you just have your usual function buttons, LED indicators, and for mouse, you get the option of trackpad or the little nipple. A pretty well specced out little laptop. Unfortunately though, mine has suffered a little bit of damage here. The plastic, I think, is just starting to become a bit frail with age. But never mind that, because I have another one. This one here though has had a very rough life, but at least this plastic is intact. So I think what we'll do is swap this over. Then 
we can fire up our good laptop again and let's put it through its paces with a few benchmarks. One of the downsides of an old laptop like this or any laptop for that matter is if you need to get into them to do a bit of work they can be a bit of a mystery. Taking these things apart is always a bit of a challenge and I fully expect to find several hundred screws here that need undoing. Normally this panel here with the buttons on it is the first to come off and sort of yes there we are that bit was easy I'm not so sure about the rest At least the screen is easy enough to take off. Let's remove that cover. Take the screw out of that, then the two out of the hinges at the rear. We can get this out of the way and put it somewhere safe. A lot of screws on the bottom here label K. And judging by their length, I'm going to guess they're holding in the keyboard. So getting the keyboard off them, I initially thought that was one of those types of ribbon clamps that you lift up on and then the ribbon comes out of it, but no, this is just one single piece that just disconnects from the board. There's then just a lot of screws labeled P, presumably for plastics. Let's take all them out and hopefully that will release the top of the case. Okay, with a bit of luck then, this top cover will come off. Just like that. I just need to do it again now. Now we can put the good cover on this laptop. So this is the other top then. No cracks. Let's just uh, put it back together. And uh, don't forget to reattach ribbon cables. I just noticed my original cover for this section here is broke. But uh, Luckily, we have a spur. Let's get our battery and floppy drive back in. And let's make sure it still works. I'll need to reset the time and date. And the scaling option has obviously been disabled in the BIOS. I'll have to go into that to sort that out. In fact, there we are. Function F7, that turns on the scaling. Okay, everything's looking good, still working. I'm just gonna give everything a bit of a clean. Then we'll run some benchmarks. Looking pretty good. 
Right, it's benchmark time. So it has to be 3D Mark 2000 and 3D Mark 2001. Whether we have 3D Mark 2000 and we scored 4,475 3D Marks. Let's try 2001. And there we have it, 3D Mark 2001 gets us 2000 511 3D marks. So what does all that really mean? Well, as you've seen at the start of the video, games like Unreal Tournament play absolutely fine on this little laptop. And anything else of a similar vintage, such as Half-Life, no one lives forever. Even Soldier of Fortune and Medal of Honor. They all work really well on this laptop. But it also means that newer titles such as Unreal Tournament 2004 or Serious Sam The Second Encounter should also work. Since we started off with a bit of Unreal Tournament, how about trying 2004? Right, that took a good half an hour to install. It may have a DVD drive, but it's not the quickest. It's been a long time since I've seen that. I forgot just how good this game is, but how well is it going to run on our little Dell? So let's just have a quick look at what settings the game has given us. So 800 by 600, 16 bit color, sort of expected that and everything on low. Character shadows are just a blob. That's fine. Let's see what the frame rate's like. But the frame rate seems really stable. I'm actually wondering, could we crank the details up a little bit further? Let's just try the resolution up a bit. That'll clean the image up a wee bit for us. Yeah, this looks a wee bit sharper and, well, a little bit of stuttering. Still certainly playable, but uh, the game was definitely smoother at 800 by 600. So I think it's pretty safe to say that this sort of game, 2004, is probably about the limit of what you're going to be able to enjoy on this type of laptop. Well there we have it, our little Dell Inspiron 8100 makes for a pretty decent retro gaming rig. 
especially if you want to play the classic 3D games from the late 90s into the early noughties. Now one problem is if you want to go further back into the DOS era games that's when you may start to struggle. You see the sound chip in this laptop in particular has absolutely zero DOS support. No Sound Blaster emulation whatsoever. Your only hope is that those DOS games would support the Windows sound system or even just general MIDI, in which case they will work under Windows on this. In true DOS mode though, you're completely beat no sound. But as I said for those later Windows 98 games, this thing is perfect. And it comes in at a fraction of the price and a fraction of the space of a big desktop rig. Well that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video I would appreciate a thumbs up. Why not hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you next time.